So, big news coming out of the Wales and Scarlet camp. Sam Costello injured till January. Dan Bigger gone. Gareth Anscombe gone. Rhys Patchell, Jared Evans, all gone. Where does this leave Wales now as they prepare for the Six Nations? And if Costello doesn't come back in time, who are we going to have at 10? I don't know. Let's get into it and find out. So basically, I've had a look across the regions and the pickings are slim. Everyone else who's of quality or got any experience, they've already gone. Looking around, we're thinking, what's going to happen? So Costello's injured his hamstring, he's torn his hamstring and he's injured his shoulder. Both of those done in the Barbarians game. So again, throws up. Was that game necessarily worth it? Certainly not for Dwayne Peel. Johnny Williams also with a hamstring. So the Scarlets are not going to be thanking Wales very much for uh, organising that fixture when they did. But looking at something different, what's going to happen now? Estimate to come back in January. What happens if he comes back at the end of January? First game against Scotland is right at the beginning of, of February. So we need him to probably have like two or three games you'd expect to get back into form and make sure that you know his fitness is up and stuff like that so what's going to happen hopefully we can hope and pray that he's going to come back a little bit earlier but if he doesn't what are Wales going to do so I thought well we need to have a look around the regions and see whatever whatever else is available so if you look at the Dragons Kai Evans is probably one of the front runners but he didn't have his best game against uh, the Barbarians. And he's not really like very proven at the moment. He hasn't really even played that much at regional level in comparison to maybe Costello. Uh, the other option, Angus O'Brien. He's been playing all right, former Wales under 20s. But he's 29 now, I believe. Maybe we could see him. He's more of a 15, but he has been playing 10. So that could be an option. Then if you look at Cardiff. Cardiff are playing Tinas de Boer at 10. He's obviously South African, by, you can tell by the name. I don't really agree with them signing him this year. I think they should have done something more to bring, uh, keep hold of the of Jared Evans, but that's another, another issue. The only other option at Cardiff is Ben Thomas, who's predominantly played at 12 for the Blues and sometimes 15. He does play 10, I believe he is the Cardiff's second choice outside half were the Boer to the beer, sorry, to pick up some sort of injury. But he's played little to no games there. I've only seen him maybe play there twice. Uh, so yeah, unless he's going to get a run of games. The only other option at Cardiff, which we have heard Gatland talk about, and he actually has a little bit of a period there against the Barbarians, is Thomas Williams. Now, Gatland did mention this. I don't see this being an option. He's not played there really before. He's obviously vastly experienced at Scrum Half. Um, Cardiff are playing tomorrow and he's starting at nine. So there's no um, plan for Matt Sherritt to be playing him at 10 by the looks of things. The only way I would see that being any sort of option is if he now plays two or three months into the Six Nations before the Six Nations starts, and then he's playing 10. That's the only way he's going to play, but it's just a pipe dream. I think maybe something for Gatlin to give a little bit of a talking, uh, talking point, as he likes to do. Uh, we also got Owen Williams, possibly a bit of a front runner at the Ospreys. We've seen him play for Wales before. He's got plenty of experience. He's mature, big and physical. It doesn't seem like Gatlin favours him very much, so I'm not sure whether Wills, he's going to be the front runner. I think Gatland may look elsewhere, but he's certainly an option. And I think given how bare the cupboards are, he's certainly going to be well within a look-in. Uh, also looking at the other Ospreys outside half is Jack Walsh. He's an Aussie, so he doesn't count. Um, and then going back to Costello's actual region, the Scarlets, you've got Johan Lloyd, who we've I've talked about on the on an episode a few weeks ago as a potential I'd like to see him have a few runs at 10. He's had a few runs at 10 while Costello's been with Wales and he's done all right. Uh, the Scarlets had two really tough away fixtures in South Africa. I think he played okay with obviously as good as you can play when you lose by 50 points. 
And then I thought he had a good game against Cardiff last weekend. So he's going to get an extended run now. Could very well see him return into the Wales squad. He has had two caps, but I believe they were both on the wing. Either the wing at fullback, it was a while ago now. Uh, so he has been in the uh, environment before, still very young. And he's definitely going to get a run of games now, which is going to be important. Um, the other options, if you look outside Wales, is going to be the little bit of the Wales' forgotten man, and that's Callum Sheedy. We saw Sheedy be quite a big part of Wayne Pivak's um, setup, and he played quite a few games in, in Pivak's reign, but um, he sort of faded, and I remember Dan Bigger actually saying when we lost, I think it was to Italy, uh, there's a few players played their last game for Wales, and that was the last time he played, so I don't know whether that was appointed comment at him but Gatland has mentioned him by name and he's probably got a good chance now he has been playing for Bristol so um, there's an opportunity for Sheedy I definitely think that was Gatland saying uh, sub subliminally to him you have some good performances mate and you're definitely in with a shout and he's definitely gonna be in with a shout because where else do we go after that then you're, you're looking at really young players Gatlin did mention Will Reed of the Dragons, but he's barely played for the Dragons, so you're not going to be throwing him in first game against Scotland of the Six Nations, are you? So, uh, yeah, that's the state of affairs. It's great We, we it's great to, that we got some young players and some promising players, um, but it's crazy to think we had all this excitement about Costello actually getting a run at 10 now. It's so unfortunate for him that he's got uh, injured, and it's a bad injury. It's not a couple of weeks. It's a few months it's not going to end his career, don't get me wrong. He could potentially have uh, rehab sooner and hopefully get back at the start of January. And then I don't think this is going to be such a big worry. I still think he's going to be the front runner. But if he's just getting fit for those Wales, uh, Wales camps and he hasn't had any rugby under his belt, then how confident are you going to be dropping him straight in and against Scotland in a big first game? Because this is going to be a big important Six Nations for Wales to maintain the momentum, keep the confidence in this young squad moving forward. Scotland are going to be chomping at the bit after obviously a disappointing World Cup where they'll feel hard done by uh, of the group that they were in. But we really want to see the best players play for Wales and I've spoke about it so many times. There's a certain young Joe Hawkins playing in Exeter this year. He plays 10. I know he played mainly uh, 12 for Wales, but even Gatlin mentioned I was looking at him as a long-term future prospect at 10 for Wales potentially. It just shows how stupid this rule is where these caps... I, I understand you want to keep the players in Wales, but this you're just cutting off your nose to spite your face. You, if this cap rule didn't exist, you could have had Jared Evans, who I think is really unlucky not to have actually reached 25 caps. I think he was brilliant in his Cardiff tenure, biased of course. But yeah, you've got to look at Hawkins and think how much better would it be if we could have picked this guy. And there's some weirdness going on with Henry Thomas, who's actually gone back to Montpellier. And because of the way his contract is was um, sort of redone, that he's still apparently, according to him, eligible to play for Wales. So he lost his contract because he was going to play for Wales for Montpellier. Now he's gone back and signed a new contract and he's apparently still eligible. So it makes you think that if that's happening and they're spending, finding some ways around the rules, can they not just do it for Joe Hawkins? I don't know. I don't think they're going to. It's too high profile at this point, but it just hammers home. I don't think it's sustainable for Wales to be doing this uh, minimum cap rule. Like I said, I understand the reasons, but we just don't have the player depth. And if you're not going to have the funding to keep the players in Wales, then why the hell are you saying, well, you have to play in Wales or you're not going to play for Wales? I've said Wales too many times. But that's just my thoughts, just letting you know that Costello is out. I'd like to know your thoughts, who you, you would like to see coming in and maybe getting an opportunity at, at 10. This is the first time I've actually recorded my face on this, so let me know what you think. I'm going to just give it a try. But uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.